So this is kind of sort of a re-upload, as I actually made this a couple weeks ago, but then decided to take it down. But coincidence or not, with all the excitement that happened recently with the defensemen, well, I really just couldn't help myself, you know? If you were one of the few that viewed the original, you're going to notice that one specific jerk moment has been added that I'm sure most of you know exactly what I'm referring to when I say that. Regardless, as controversial as this guy has been, Let's remember that it still gives us no license to hate or say derogatory things about him. Sure, you're going to hear my tone shift a little, but let's be the bigger people in the comment section here and try not to fly at that level, maybe? Just food for thought. Anyways, on to Tony D'Angelo's top jerk moments we go. We all know, at least those of us that watch hockey frequently, that sometimes things just happen. Tensions rise, and every now and then, officials get the brunt of players' frustrations, unintentionally. And if D'Angelo wasn't accused of the same thing twice so far in his young career, then maybe, just maybe, I'd chalk it up to just that. Anyways, in what began as a rather troubling trend uh, that commenced during the defenseman's days playing for the Sarnia Sting of the OHL, while there isn't much video evidence available, cause you know, this was juniors and all, but what we do know is D'Angelo's first offense against the guys with the stripes took place during his 2013-14 OHL season which would be one mired with controversy for this young blue liner. During a regular season game while going up against young Connor McDavid and the Erie Otters, D'Angelo decided to be the second one out from the back end that game after his teammate, Zach Kaur, also left the contest due to injury. So D'Angelo wasn't exactly helpful when he found himself penalized from the contest uh, with only around 5 minutes and 49 seconds left in the third, and uh, he apparently didn't like that very much. The team ended up losing the game, and he was also suspended suspended for verbally attacking the referee after everything went down post-game. So yeah, uh, this was only the beginning as far as his suspension records are concerned. And since this is a ranking, that takes us straight to D'Angelo's second abuse of an official. After being drafted by Tampa in the first round, 19th overall, Steve Auserman expressed much optimism in regarding to his selection, saying, ultimately, we believe in the boy. He's 18 years old. He's acted in situations that are unacceptable in society today. We believe he's a good kid and we're going to give him the opportunity, but we're going to hold him to the expectations of all our players in Tampa. Any improper conduct won't be tolerated, but he's 18 years old. Kids change and we expect him to change. We believe he'll change and grow up, he says. Hmm. So after playing for the Lightning farm team, the Syracuse Crunch, he was scratched eight times and according to team management, had a lot of attitude issues. Therefore, after, uh, I guess he wore his welcome out, D'Angelo was shipped out to the desert, and then joined the Arizona Coyotes from there. But unfortunately for him, controversy still followed. During a regular season meeting against the Calgary Flames in Alberta on New Year's Eve, D'Angelo's relationship with officials remained strained at best. After becoming involved in a post-buzzer scrum on ice, the nearest official, David Breezeball, attempted to physically restrain the defenseman. D'Angelo didn't quite enjoy being tied down here, uh, and decided to physically try to break the official's hold on his jersey. Well, as you probably can guess, uh, this didn't go over well, and D'Angelo received his second suspension for official abuse, but this time he was dealt three games. And the most recent incident that involved this controversial character took place amid the regular season series against the Pittsburgh Penguins. After declining defensively on ice and being scratched in multiple games, D'Angelo made sure to go out with a bang from the team, as the defenseman who didn't exactly play his best game against Pittsburgh here recently decided to try and take it out on goaltender Alex Gorgiev. Following the overtime loss, while several sources and various accusations have been made on who was involved, we know that with 100% certainty that D'Angelo and Gorgiev got into it after D'Angelo made a sarcastic comment toward him, according to Elliot Friedman, which, you know, I, I, I really trust this guy. Anyways, and in response to the altercation breaking out, other members of the Rangers team proceeded and successfully broke up the fight. Now, multiple sources have said that Chris Kreider stepped in and gave D'Angelo a knuckle sandwich and then called it a day, and I could plausibly see this as factual. Kreider's been with the team for a very long time and, and has been a staple for the blue shirts during it. Anyways, due to a combination of his actions and bad start to the season, D'Angelo was then put on waivers and result, and has since been cleared. Whether or not any team will be brave enough to take a chance on him has yet to be seen, but I'm going to guess not. Well, I definitely didn't save the best, but the worst for last here, folks. I know, I know, that, that wasn't a very pleasant joke, but 
as D'Angelo wasn't always suspended for official abuse while in Sarnia. Uh, he, not even close. Similarly to guys like Brandon Manning and Mitchell Miller, D'Angelo subjected another person, which happened to be his teammate at the time, to a racial slur. While the victim's identity wasn't revealed, D'Angelo was initially dealt a team suspension by head coach at the time, Trevor Letowski. And while the league minimum for violating the league's harassment, abuse, slash diversity policy... You know, two words. There's two words that I crossed the line with and, you know, inappropriate comments to to other players was only five games the defenseman was given eight games not only by his team but also the league as well and no that that doesn't equal 16 games guys it was just you know both i guess powers were in sync here so this is what head coach Litowski had to say. It was obviously a serious matter. Anytime it involves one of our players, there has to be a certain respect level. We respect all of our players, and it was pretty serious, Litowski says. But while the coach clearly saw black and white on the issue, D'Angelo's own father, Lou, saw it as more of a mixture. As during a pre-draft documentary for his son that was made, uh, he, he said some rather troubling statements and kind of sort of almost excused the behavior. Yeah, he said, yeah, it kind of isn't right, but you know, well, he's just following in my footsteps, yo. It's it's all good. Uh, we're, we're, we're from Philly, you know? We're from Philly, so it's all good. Anyways, I'm just going to leave this clip here and yeah, y'all just, uh, just enjoy this. You know, in a situation where he got to spend it, I would have got to spend it too. Mm-hmm. So, you know, he probably so hears you, me. So you, you, you see yourself saying maybe some of the same things that he has Every said. Every day. Every day. And not that it's right. It's just it's how, I was, it's how I was raised and things I'm used to from my upbringing. You know, you say, Sal, you say the South Philly thing. Some people don't understand. It's a different way of growing up. And it's not always right, but it's, it is what it is. 